Justin, how you doing, buddy? Welcome in, people. Jump in. It is winter time. Here we are. Hey, Trevor. Happy New Year to you, too, buddy. Happy New Year to everybody. Fifty-four dozen. Well, I just got... I've been doing a little bit here and there. I did six dozen leeches uh, Monday, I guess. That was a good day. Um, so, welcome, everybody. Um, I think this is uh, maybe the second live stream of the season. First, kind of. Um, been beer. Uh, been busy. Yeah, the beard's back. Um, winter time. Got to stay warm. And, um, yeah, so this is a crony I posted, uh, I don't know, a few weeks back, I guess. And I had a ton of questions on how to tie it and uh, how long I fished it and blah, blah, blah. Um, this thing was kind of put through the paces this past year. Um, as some of you know, we don't just go out and fish a fly once or twice. Uh, before we put it out there, we really put it through the paces of, of typically a season, sometimes two, uh, if we have to tweak them. But this thing was, was deadly. It kind of reps a dark crony that's starting to chrome up. Uh, you'll find those quite often, actually, um, where you get a, a dark bug that's starting to gas up and make the ascent, um, but it hasn't quite fully filled up yet. And so it's not shiny, but it's got that kind of dark black gray uh, with some shinier notes to it. That's kind of what this thing does. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'm just going to tie a few of them. Um, and if you guys have any questions, Moose is not going to let me tie anything. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? You're getting right in here today. Happy New Year from Moose, everybody. Thanks, buddy. Um, anyhow, so you're going to need um, white thread. Going to need black thread. Going to need some buzzer wrap. And uh, uni stretch gills. Um, black nickel, I guess you would call it black bead. Um, extra small silver wire. And uh, we put it all together here. Um, I'm tying on a Daiichi 1760. And uh, yeah, that's about the only hook that I would recommend. We uh, like to chase big fish. And if I lose one, I want to know that it's my fault and not my gear's fault. So we stick with the strong ones. <clears throat> Happy New Year from Kamloops. Dig the shirt. Yeah, shout out to the Red Dragons. That one is uh, from them. <clears throat> so, nothing fancy about how to tie this. It's it's um, a fairly straightforward tie. Thread blend with one body material and one rib. Um, most of you know we prefer the simple patterns. Um, they're easier to tie, they're easier to keep a, a skinny profile on, and they're durable, um, is probably the biggest thing. <clears throat> so, tied my gills in, um, I do always put a few wraps in front, that helps to prop them up. Big hole forward with the bead, and, um tie in this white thread my vice is a little less stable than it normally is um, mostly because I have to prop it up a little bit for the camera but we'll make it work so bear with me on that one so one bead two bead three bead you guys know how that works um, I don't always use it simply because 
I tie gajillions of these things and eventually you just kind of figure out where you need your wraps to be and um, but if any of you are unfamiliar with that uh, technique there are streams on it that you can find in the feed or on YouTube <clears throat> um, so the reason I use extra small even on this 14 is just because I want this to be subtle I want the rib to be seen but if you use the small silver it uh, when you put it in the water you'll notice that it's um, it the whole fly takes on a much more silver look so by knocking the size down to the extra small um, it keeps it uh, a little more subtle and then it takes on more of the black gray look than the silver look Dearborn Ford bringing us our coffee in Forty Creek thank you very much <coughs> If you're not drinking 40 Creek cream, then you probably should. All right, so I'm just going to nice snug wraps, take this wire down to basically about where the barb is. Um, as I say, I'm just gonna tie a few of these things. So if you guys have any questions, um, then, uh, feel free to fire them away um, I will put up a YouTube video on this thing um, probably tomorrow so then you'll get a real good close-up look at uh, how to tie it on the streams it's not super easy to get that especially because I got to use the shitty camera on the phone so um, anyhow now I've got my favorite buzzer wrap this is smoke <clears throat> and I'm just going to I left my taper a little bit skinnier than I normally would and that's just to leave some room uh, to overlay my black thread but <clears throat> been on 40 Creek I, I was off for a couple weeks and uh, just went back to work on Tuesday so it was a bit of a bit of a reality check not having it in my coffee <clears throat> Um, and we got a loop finisher here somewhere, and that's it for the white. <clears throat> so then we're gonna come in with our black, and then this is what I'll use to build up that taper. Uh, Buzz wraps at Canadian Llama. Name of the fly is the Charcoal Chronomid, aka the CC Rider. Whatever you like. Um, there is a nice up close picture that, um, as I say, I posted a, a couple weeks ago. So check out the feed and um, you will find it there if you want a nice close up. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to leave a little white butt exposed and uh, non-UV smoke, no UV. Um, and then just kind of spread this thread a little bit until I kind of get that blended look in the back. And then I'll just take the black up and just finish off this taper. Yes, non-UV, no UV. All right, so we've got, you can see, so down at the back, super white, then in between here is blended together, and then the top, kind of half of the hook, I guess you would say, is just straight black. So now I'm gonna take this buzzer wrap and I'm, I don't wanna overlap it. So I'm just gonna pull it fairly snug and this is gonna create, kinda of dull down the back a little bit, but it turns this black to kind of a dark gray. That's why it looks so weird. 
Okay, I'm not going to stop, but I've actually got two strands of buzzer wrap here. It looked a little strange, and there's two stuck right together, so this probably isn't going to turn out the way I want to, but it's just when you use two, it's a little less see-through and a little bit more shiny, but that's okay. we got a few more to do. And then I'll just take my silver wire... Seven-ish wraps up the body, and away we go. That's not bad. I thought I was going to butcher that. I haven't been tied a jillion dozen leeches over the weekend, and not many cronies, no cronies, so that one turned out okay. <clears throat> Quiet bunch. Uh, so it's a 14 Daiichi 1760, and I've got a 332nd tungsten bead on there. <clears throat> Seven, is that how many I did? I hope Norm counted, I didn't. But anyhow, that's um, pretty much it. Now, I thought I had some glue around here, but <clears throat> watching and learning. Fair enough. Come on. It's all gummed up, I think. There we go. So in a pinch, if you can't find the brushable stuff, these little things do work. <clears throat> I will get to those questions as soon as I'm done messing with this glue. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, do you use a sonar? I use a Garmin Striker 4. Okay, what do we got here? What month would you fish it? Uh, anytime the ice is off in Region 3. Primarily May and June. Why don't I like UV smoke? UV doesn't catch as much fish. These are just my opinions, people, so take them lightly. Take them as you will. Um, sometimes I will counter wrap my wire with something like buzzer wrap. I don't often do it. Um, but if I'm tying... Uh, with tinsel or flashaboo or anything like that where I get little tiny grooves that my wire can sit in then I will counter rib them uh, or if I'm using any brittle natural materials pheasant tail turkey that kind of thing then same thing I will um, will uh, counter rib them um, BC born and raised you are very welcome is buzzer wrap the same as ASP? No, it is not, unfortunately. Have you tried coloring the white thread with black? Yes, I have. And it just takes too much time. Um, you're doing too much black uh, black wraps. And then it tends to mess your blend up a little bit because the thread will bleed and you won't get the white kind of poking through. So you can try it, but I do recommend switching. Good luck on the steelhead tomorrow. Maybe just to recap on materials. Yeah, I'm going to tie a couple more, so we'll do that. The fly is a charcoal chronomid, a.k.a. the CC Rider. And we are all caught up on the questions. Boo, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So even if I bring this close, this lighting just kind of sucks. Um, yep, yeah, it does. So check out the picture on the... Uh, on the post if uh, you need a close look at this thing <clears throat> so to review materials um, 332nd bead bead to size whatever I, I tie this from a 12 down to a 16 sometimes even an 18 um, so you can um, 
use the bead that you want for the size of the hook that you're using, but uh, for this Daiichi 1760, I've got a 332nd black nickel, uh, black thread, white thread, regular smoke buzzer wrap, and um, some uni stretch for your gills, and that's about it. With a red, you can do any option you want, um, red rib, whatever, um, but I would do the silver. As I said earlier, the, the point of this fly is to rep that pupa that's starting to gas up. That little bit of silver adds the shine that I want. It's just a subtle shine, but it is there. Um, you know, if you really want to have the red, then you can um, do a, two, a double rib of red wire and silver wire. But all I've tested is the silver and i know it crushes so if you want to catch them use silver if you want to guess try red the current non-uv from cl is really dark did you get that long ago i think they changed the color um i don't know i constantly get different stuff so um <clears throat> you can go through the the um the hank and pick out the even this has some darker some lighter so you can go through and pick out the um the best to suit the pattern um when you tie on an 18 do you tie in gills no not usually um i don't tie gills on a lot of flies believe it or not um for my personal stuff they just don't make a huge difference so that's uh yeah can you mention how to get the perfect taper? All right, so with this taper technique, it's called the one bead, two bead. And this has made a lot of people improve their tying, um, like big time and noticeably very quickly. Um, it's something I, I mentioned, I think last year, maybe the year before, um, but I'll show you here with this one. It just uses the bead uh, to help as a guide to build your taper it makes it super easy so um you're gonna have to do side by side wraps to make this effective so you want to get somewhat proficient in thread control but i just tie in with a few wraps right behind that bead and now i've come down about one bead length i'm just gonna trim my tag <coughs> And then I come back up to the back of the bead. Now I'm going to go down a second bead length. It's so about there and come back up. Now, if you're um, worried about it bulking up too much, then just do two. Because when you put the black on, that would essentially be your third. Um, or you can do two like I just did and then just grab your wire and tie that in and then that leaves room for the uh, black thread to go over top and not end up bulking the fly up too much. So use the wire as a guide when you're coming down if you pull it out at an angle It'll stack your wraps uh, tight together and uh, keep a nice even look. What were your top five cronies of 2022? Well, for a small fee, I would probably give out that information. But let me rephrase, a pretty decent fee. I would probably give out that information. But I will tell you that the zucchini is in the top five. No bullshit. <clears throat> uh, no, this is just uh, Techstream ADOT. Um, I have a habit. I don't know if you notice, but almost every time I stop um, or my bobbin comes out of my hand, as I let it go, I twist it. And so in doing that all the time, I'm continually flattening it. So it tends to keep it flat. Um, 
as I uh, as I do that. So just a good habit if you're tying lots of cronies. Um, get in the habit of when you drop that bod, uh, bobbin, just spin it. Uh, that midge thread I'm not a fan of. So nothing I can't do with regular ADOT that I could probably do with that. Um, I like my um, UTC threads. Um, I don't think the midge thread and the UTC thread are really the same thing. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan on, uh, on the midge thread stuff. Just more shit you have to buy that you don't really have to buy. <clears throat> um, okay, I gotta get caught up here. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can put the wire on either side. Top, bottom, front, back. <clears throat> so now I'm tying in this black. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So there's one. <clears throat> yeah, the limey is a gooder. The limey is a gooder. Rob has been doing this for a very, very long time. So he has um, had a ton, a ton of experience on the water playing with what works and what doesn't work. And, and um, so that uh, certainly helps to create things that, um, that catch them up. Up in smoke. Yeah, the up in smoke, the whole white thread thing is catching on. I'm seeing it more and more. And um, white thread under ASB, white thread under the smoke. That thing is was pretty deadly. I don't know that people took it for what it was until a lot of guys went out and fished it this year. Um, and then realized that it's kind of the real deal, that one. <clears throat> One thing we don't do is bullshit. If we tell you something catches fish, for us it's because we're usually using it to catch fish. But LSD, yep. I don't know how that stuff went so under the radar for so long. Laser silver tinsel is like, I mean, the holo holographic stuff is cool, but laser silver is just like straight deadly. Um, so you can see kind of what I did. I did the same thing there. Just um, about equal amounts, maybe a little bit more blend. So you got white butt, and then say that's like one eighth of the hook, and then three eighths is going to be the blend, and then the top half of the hook will be just straight black. And however you're comfortable doing your blends, do them. Um, Oh, wait a second. We totally screwed up. Did nobody catch on here? Wait a second. I got to scroll through this. Nobody caught this? What is going on here? People, I didn't even tie in the fucking buzzer wrap. Oh, pardon me. Didn't even tie in the buzzer wrap. All right. Well, thanks, Cole. Appreciate it, bro. <laughs> Yep, buzzer. Yeah, easy after I told all y'all. Yeah. That's okay. Probably not the first time that's happened. Won't be the last. It's the 40 Creek. It shouldn't be. It's only my second one. <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, I'm not sure if any of you have ever imploded a fly before but let me show you how to do it take some shitty scissors that you don't like too much get in there and shred that thing if I had a lighter handy I would throw the lighter at it 
Too much smoke. No, not enough. Look at my eyes. See? Nope. This is the first live stream I've done in a while. I uh, was trying to be somewhat prepared, and then I end up fucking up. <clears throat> That's all good. So that doesn't take that long, believe it or not, to just shred uh, everything off of that hook. Now, if I would have caught it with the white thread on there, I probably still would have been okay, but um, okay, are we clear for takeoff here? Close. All right, chick up, redo. Here, this one we'll just tie in to make up for the time. We'll do a, a real-time chronomid tie, so bear with me if I don't answer the questions for... Uh, <clears throat> um, mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Yep, yep. Clint, I see you there with that comment. You know, shit <laughs> Okay, so let me just bang this out real quick, and then I'll do one more, kind of taking my time. I like to get into a bit of a rhythm when I'm, like, production tying. It, um, not to say go super fast, I just uh, kind of do things in a similar way. And blending with this thread is really easy. I mean, it lays just as flat as UTC. I don't know. Um, I mean, UTC is probably a little bit wider when it's flat, um, but the tech stream, I think it cords up quicker, but again, I'm so used to spinning my bobbin every time I drop it that I don't really notice. Um, but you can see like wrapping into this thing, it takes me not very many wraps to cover that white completely. And uh, it's because I've got that laying nice and flat. Yeah, I tie a lot of my more productive patterns with both um, white beads and black beads. Um, some of them I just ditch the gills and, and leave a black bead, um, but certainly I'll tie gillless versions of the better ones, and that's mostly because some lakes are super stained water and um, or have big algae blooms, and that can foul your gills, so never hurts to throw a white bead on. And anybody that says you can't catch fish with white beads is smoking something that I don't even want. And then the other piece of advice I'll give you is tension. Whether it's wrapping material, wrapping your thread, wrapping your wire, make sure to always have good amount of tension. You don't want to break the thread, but you can see, like I'm moving that hook, right? Um, some hooks would break just by doing that, but uh, these are strong. so. Um, but I am cranking on it, and that just makes for a more durable fly. Um, really, it's uh, 
the tighter things are wound together, the better they're going to hold together, and uh, the longer you'll be able to fish them. So, yeah, the real-time version's a little bit quicker, isn't it? Okay, what did I miss? Let me go back here. Uh, did you have a learning curve to get used to it? Um, I don't think so. Like I say, I think my my the fact that I twist that bob and every time I let go, um, I really think goes a long way. You know, I mean, the more you wrap that stuff, the more it's going to cord up. The longer it'll take to sit there and spin and flatten out for you. Um, so. Yeah, it's tough. I don't. Uh, I don't think it took much for me to figure it out. But so the the whole blending thing is interesting, actually. I mean, if you want me to chat about it a little bit, um, I think blending flies to be uh, to catch fishermen is probably more common than blending flies to catch fish um, if that makes sense so the original blend um, that we did um, was the screaming viking and so the olive over the red and initially when that brought out um, rob used um, utc thread underneath and then uni thread over top. So if you look at, at chronomids, at samples, when they have a red butt or when they are like a blended fly, they often look blotchy. You don't get that kind of seamless blend uh, all the way up like you would if you perfectly laid UTC over UTC. So it's kind of one of those uh, things that I'm okay if it, if it comes out a little bit blotchy, and if you look at the close-up of this pattern, it does. Um, but it, um, yeah, it's just something to consider. You know, the, the seamless blends, I do them sometimes. They're, you know, they look great um, in a macro photo, but I don't think it makes a big difference when you're fishing them. I mean, if I wanna be more realistic, then I would prefer this style. Um, so, yeah. Acetate floss was the original uh, bleeding limey, and um, it was just uh, tough to tie in smaller sizes, so there the Screaming Viking was born. Speaking of durable flies, do you ever use super glue under your smoke ASB, maybe for your personal flies? Uh, nope. I put it on top. Um, so... A lot of guys run that tapered ASB up the fly uh, to create the body and then the rib is underneath. And that's cool, they look great. I tie them sometimes too. Uh, the Iron Man was originally tied that way. Um, but the um, tying it this way or even putting my wire rib over top of my ASB, if I get a nick in my ASB, um, then it's not gonna come unraveled. The wire is gonna hold it tight, uh, whereas if I've got it wrapped up and I get a nick, it's just gonna unravel and the fly's toast. So durability, different factors there, why we, we do what we do, but um, to each their own. If you tie something one way, you just gotta remember to tie more of them, that's all. <clears throat> UV resin. Um, a pattern like this, you can use resin on, um, but where I really use resin is a fly like, uh, say, John Kent's Copper Top. That's a perfect example. You can buy the buzzer wrap at Canadian Llama online. Um, <clears throat> so the Copper Top utilizes a, the newer version has tinsel, and then I think John uses buzzer wrap now, used to use uh, stretch floss or scud back. Um, so what that, when you have tinsel underneath buzzer wrap, or, uh, in this case, you know, the black underneath the buzzer wrap, that UV has a bit of a magnifying effect, um, where it'll bring out the subtleties of the undercolors and the underbodies, or in this case, you'll see more of the gray in the buzzer wrap. Uh, so I tend to kind of use it 
for that purpose, only because I don't think it's as durable as the Crazy Glue is. Actually, I'm just going to say it's not as durable as the Crazy Glue is, but um, but yeah, that's about what I reserve the, uh, the resin for. <clears throat> And again, totally just how myself, us, we do it. There's no wrong, right or wrong way to do it, but <clears throat> to each their own. All right. Loctite. Yep, Loctite, crazy glue. All of it uh, works pretty well. Tungsten, that's another thing that makes a difference. Not as much, I guess, anymore. You can there's lots of micro split shot and that kind of thing that you can uh, that you can use nowadays, but alright. So I'm gonna try and I don't know if that's gonna is that any better? The forward facing camera on phones just suck. But we'll do a little bit closer on this one. Might be able to see a little better. <clears throat> As I say, we will probably replay this stream on YouTube, but I have a video for this that I just have to edit. And uh, away I go. I'll post that up to YouTube in the next couple days. Do I have a favorite bloodworm pattern? Um, probably just the BW2. It's what I fish 90% of the time. I've got some off ones and some that use ASB and a whole bunch of different kinds but if I'm going to a lake and I know fish are on bloodworms then the BW2 is the one I would do and uh, that will be in the excuse me on the YouTube channel I believe um, if not you can find it in the Instagram feed um, and it happens to use red buzzer wrap so if you're buying smoke buzzer wrap and you don't have red You'll want to get some. This buzzer wrap has probably, for the last few years, been one of my favorite um, materials for chronomids. So much different stuff has come out. And I played with a lot of stuff that I absolutely hate. And um, stuff that just doesn't make sense. But this... Um, Buzzer wrap is just a game changer. <clears throat> My camera focuses on what it wants to because it's a cell phone with a forward facing camera, so I can't even um, try to autofocus on the fly. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't work. I need to use the other side, and if I do that, then I can't see you guys. So you can see the first world problems we're running into. <clears throat> but that's okay. You got the gist of it, you got the materials, and if you hold on to it for a little bit, then you can get it on the YouTube video and it'll be nice and close and you'll see every thread wrap. <clears throat> you are welcome. I think the biggest thing with these little bugs is to not overthink them and um, when it comes to tying them, fishing them, whatever it might be, keep it as simple as you can. <clears throat> All right, I need a lot of other little chunk of wire here. And we will pop out one more. Don't forget the buzzer wrap. Now everyone's a comedian, eh? All right, who was that? I got a Badland 62. Okay, I owe you one. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, touche. That's what I say. I own one. I just gotta. I got nothing for that one. That's it.
But your time will come if you watch these streams. <clears throat> Ah, that's fun. Get him in the zone and watch the barber drop. That is it. That is a lot of it, for sure. Here's a little trivia question for you. So, if you pull up to me on a lake, or anybody for that matter, and... I'm going to see who gets this. And I'm smacking on fish pretty good. And you can't catch fish. You're not sure what's going on. And you decide, I'm going to ask this fellow a question. What is the one question that you would ask? Go. Class? Anyone? But what if I'm fishing like a big old dragonfly nymph in the middle of a cron hatch? Where's your car, dude? <laughs> depth. So I gather depth is a little bit uh, important. Glenn, that's classified. Sorry, bud. <clears throat> How's my beer supply? Um, it's okay. Don't drink a ton of it. But, um, there's some in the fridge. We got some apple pie moonshine. That's been good. <clears throat> I would ask, would you like a cold brew? <laughs> is that so when you get close to my boat to give me the beer you can ask me all kinds of questions that's strong <clears throat> and the answer was depth that is um, yeah that's um, one thing to consider or to remember is um, A how deep it, of water that person is anchored in and then B, how deep they're fishing. Um, if there's if they tell you I'm a foot off the bottom, but you're five feet deeper than they are, then it doesn't really matter. You're not going to be at the right depth. So, just um, something for the memory banks. <clears throat> Uh, can't find the bloodworm video you mentioned. It's super simple, Devin. It's um, it's red thread. Um, so Daiichi 1760 with a black nickel bead, um, red thread, um, red buzzer wrap, and um, gold or copper wire. Super simple. If you message me after, I can type that out in a message for you. But you fishing a blob. I fish a blob. Barbecue. Old Cole must see us out on the lake at times. We do all kinds of stuff on the barbecue, bud. That's uh, steak sandwiches, venison hams, smokies, burgers, all the things. To stay fed out there, people.
Yeah, you betcha. It's again, it's it's stupid simple, but um, I think we were talking about that over Christmas a little bit. Like, honestly, that's probably ninety percent of the uh, of the blood worms that I fish are that BW two just in in different sizes. Tofu? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, muley steaks, that guy's on. Tofu? No. Not for this meat eater. That was a nice buck. Yeah, if, um, you know, I w it would have been cool if he was tucked away a little further and I could have left him for a year. He was uh, had potential to be a pretty big deer next year, but he was nice and wide and tall and tasty. So, kaboom, down he went. The journey is a good platform for barbecue. Yep, it sure is. What was the name of the bloodworm in question? It was called the BW2. Uh, it's done with red buzzer wrap. Bloodworms, especially small ones, you want to keep super, super, super thin. Uh, so the window tint does okay, but, uh, but that buzzer wrap is just very simple. And then the other thing about buzzer wrap is it's durable as all. Like, it just holds together, that stuff. I don't even know. Like, it's, I know it's a little bit stretchy and that kind of thing, but, like, yeah, you put a BW2 on and, and you can fish that sucker all day. Uh, what is my favorite dry fly for the interior lakes? That's going to be the McStriggle Sedge. Um, that is my take on a Michelux Sedge replacing the dubbed body for a UV straggle body. It, um, Bibio Red, yep, for the blood one, that is. Uh, the straggle body is uh, much more durable and doesn't uh, really soak in any water, so that thing floats for days. But uh, this year, actually, we had a couple nights where we fished that thing right into the dark till we couldn't uh, couldn't see it. Uh, yeah, that uh, window tint one is great for the bigger for the bigger bugs for sure. Um, but again, that typically fish bloodworms smaller uh, as opposed to bigger on average. Um, oh, oh, there we go. <clears throat> Bibio red. That's the stuff. Honestly, that buzzer wrap, like, if you don't have that in, like, all the staple colors, go get it. I mean, like, it's just such good stuff from the maroon to the reds, the browns. I don't use black often because it's kind of a black. Anything black I do is, is pretty much um, going to be thread most of the time. Um, but the smoke... Um, the red, the root beer, there's a couple different olives, like it's, it's, you could do so much with it. Um, uh, I don't have a video for the 53 Buick. I don't think. Uh, if you scroll through Facebook, I'm pretty sure Rob has posted that fly a couple times. So you might be able to find it there. Um, but I apologize, I don't have that one at the ready. <clears throat> Root beer is money. Yeah, see, like, it's it's good stuff. Hey, fella, happy new year to you, too. How are your burgers? God damn, they look good, man. <clears throat> Watery olive buzzer. There you go. So, like, you guys are naming all the colors. So I would be writing that down and and getting it. I mean, you gotta remember, like I don't even I don't know what one of these things costs, but like it's probably like what is it six, seven, eight bucks maybe. Um, but like one of these is gonna last you forever. I mean, I tie a shit ton of flies, and uh, I don't I hardly go through it. Like that's my Vibio Red right there. I tie a lot of bloodworms, and look at how much is still in there, right? So, 
this Bordeaux color is a super cool, like deep red color. So you put like a red hollow underneath that. And the cool thing is it's translucent, transparent. So you can get other colors to come through underneath. You can create some really cool stuff with it. But I use white thread under a lot of the buzzer wrap. If, um, depending on what I'm trying to do, it, uh, if I want that specific color to pop, then yes, I will use uh, the yellow thread uh, or the white thread, sorry. If I want to, you know, like just using rusty brown thread and then olive buzzer wrap makes a sick, dirty olive cron, right? Um, putting those, um, putting those uh, different things uh, over top or underneath or whatever, but, but it's just a cool material that'll allow you to do that, right? Um, I feel like those materials are few and far between, so <coughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Some Canadian tires carry that stuff, I see. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Elk, ooh, nice. Yeah, they didn't suck. I could tell from all the way out here they didn't suck, but nice work. <clears throat> That's about all I got for you. I'll certainly take it. We get a few minutes left here. I think it only lets us go for an hour, but. <clears throat> um, I probably, I didn't anticipate the whole buzzer wrap fiasco to, to kick off like that. Um, and I probably should have, if I would have, then I might've checked with Kent first, but he's, he's really good. He's usually got some, uh, most of his stuff in stock there. It's tying season, so I anticipate he does, but. Um, oh, there it is. See, Kent just got new stock. There you go. <clears throat> I don't ever doubt that that guy's going to have something this time of year. If we were doing this in the spring or summer, uh, maybe less because he's less, a little less busy. But tying season, he's usually on it. Um, it's pretty tough to beat the service from that guy. And him and his uh, Amanda do treat us very, very well. So appreciate you guys going and supporting them. Thanks for the flies you sent me. Can't wait to get them. Right on. Joined late. Well, um, yeah, you can probably uh, see this later. Um, and then in a couple of days, you can um, uh, see it on YouTube as well. It'd be a much better video quality. Not quite as much good times and bullshit, but... Uh, the video will be a lot better, so. <clears throat> I don't know if I've seen Kent in here. Um, Kent, if you're watching, how's your buzzer wrap stock? <clears throat> I would check it out, guys. I'm pretty sure he will uh, He will have it, and if not, then he'll usually send you a message and, and get it to you when he does, so. Smoke is available now. Just order me some. All right, well, get it quick. Will the missed buzzer wrap be in slow motion on YouTube? Um, no, but I might put Badlands comment in slow motion on YouTube because that was, I like that. I can chuck it, but I can damn sure take it. So I like that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so we'll give him the slow mo. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah that's all i got q master 4570 thank you for coming out bud i appreciate it <clears throat> john always a pleasure buddy yeah well um like i say send me some ideas um maybe we'll do something like uh we'll do a caddis night where we can do a pupa and uh and that um mcstraggle sedge i don't know that i've ever done the mcstraggle sedge on a live but um, even if I have, we can always do it again. So, <clears throat> lots of spring and fall fish deadly. I love that. So this is the kind of stuff like Dace is saying, basically, you know, it's a pattern. I think we tied on a live stream. He twisted them up and it got him into a bunch of fish. So that, uh, that's awesome to hear. I mean, we put this stuff out there for that reason. 
and um, love to share it all with you guys. Of course, we've got to keep some for ourselves, you know, just till they're proven at least. Um, but, of course, we like to help. So anytime you have questions, feel free to uh, message on Instagram, on Facebook, YouTube. You can email us. Um, we are happy to help. Anything non-lake related, we will answer. Uh, but we try to keep it fair and keep the lake specific info uh, out of it. But patterns, techniques, materials, um, gear, you name it. Let us know what you need and we are happy to help. Um, what else? I think that's all I got. Everybody had a little bit of a laugh tonight and uh, a new pattern to throw in the box. Um, if you twist some up, tag us in it and uh, let us see what it looks like. And um, yeah, until then, we will probably... Uh, let's see, maybe this time next week, maybe sooner. I get kind of random with these things this time of year. I get a little bit restless, so we'll probably do a few more um, in the near future here. And then I think we might have some course stuff coming down the pipe too. So keep an eye on that. Um, tying course maybe and uh, some other stuff that we're working on. So yeah, anyhow, hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you need anything else and uh, look out for this coming out on YouTube in the next couple days. Right on, guys. Everybody enjoy the night. Be safe. Cheers. Tight lines.